Today we are installing solar on this Keystone Cougar and uh, it's a 19 RBE WE Western States edition or something. I'm putting uh, 365 watt panels on it. That's three panels at 165 watts a piece. Tomorrow we're going to hook up the charge controller. Today we're just focusing on the panels. And then the following day we're going to put a 2000 watt power inverter in. We're doing it in little stages. Here's the panels. Again, it'll be three of these. We've already prepped it by putting the Reno G uh, hold downs on. These panels won't be tilting, but it's a summertime situation here. So in prep, we're using eight gauge wire to tie it all together. We'll get up on the roof and show you. Right now, this is the penetration going through the roof. I'm going to drill four holes to help hold it down and then of course lots of dike. Let's get to work. Got the holes drilled. I measured from the vent. We got 21 inches to 26 inches from the aluminum to make the inside closet so we're not on the inside. And the wires heavy gauge 8 with thick insulation so it comes through at an angle the inside of the the uh, cupboard we're gonna go more like uh, 23 inches maybe even 24 so the wire can have a nice arc Let's go 21. Yep. in a 15 16 hole normally I would have went with a 5 8 but with this heavier gauge wire we're going to need a bigger hole there it is right into the insulation perfect tube so it takes me to this cabinet at 21 inches the edge It, and then we need to come under here. We we'll want this water tight, so we want to do it right the first time. Got that little o ring on. Sealing this up with some die core. Die core, plenty of die core. 
on the seam, leading edge especially. It's all gotta be sealed. Okay. So what's your honest opinion on It's a nice trailer. Got some little pan head screws to hold it down. Uh, some people will say that the die core is enough. Given in the hot sun, it could come up. I do not, it's just not enough for me. Overkill is always better, right? I'm using the clutch on here. I haven't got it that tight yet, but I do not want to break off these plastic corners. All right, she's stuck. going to cover all the screws. This die core self-leveling will take care of itself, level itself over time. So I turn my attention to the solar panel and do the same thing over the every head of every, every screw. Got our layout going for our bond tape. I cut four by six inch pads for the feet. There's one. How's that? Is that? I got a little die core in there and then I'm running through. And the MC4 wires out here so I can get to them. The Reno G mounts are a little bit low, be a little difficult. I could always push them out with a stick if I lose them, but it's just easier right now to put there. have cardboard temporary, temporarily taped onto the top of all the panels so it won't make any voltage even though we're in the shade don't want to trust that. I'm going to make our connections now. We have a 20 foot jumper cable and You would need to decide for yourself if you want to run series or parallel. That's got to do your own research. I can't help you with that. All right, we got the first panel tied in. So if we miss it, we're gonna do this uh, MC4 connector again, making little jumper wires. So here we go, we're going to strip a little bit of extra. This end already has a male on it, so we will do a female. 
And so first thing I need to do is put my parts on before I do my crimp. There's that nice seal. And then I will use the small end because that's what'll slide in and snap. Antioxidant compound. It forces this around, and we'll just have to crimp it and show you. When it's tight enough, it'll release. So now it's crimped, it's forced this end, the long ends backed into the wire. It's a really sweet deal. Then when we go to assemble, shove this in and you should hear it snap. And it did, it popped right in there. It's holding itself. Now this nice neoprene seal pushes in. And then when we tighten the end nut, it'll squish that neoprene seal and create a watertight seal. Oops. Like that. And then we got a nice seal. This end is sealed with this o-ring, that'll keep the water out. Just in case I'm going to put some OxyGuard on there. We're pretty much on the roof, done here up on the roof. Uh, we doubled up on the, on the goo. It's going to lay flat real soon. I want to give a word of caution about this roof penetration. I thought it was going to be a nice deal, I have no experience. I knew these glands were going to need to be tight, but I didn't want them so tight that we squished the rubber out. So I hand tightened these tight enough that I thought they'd be okay. After a day on the roof and some sun, this one is loose. This one is tight, but it's squishing the gasket out. Tightened out exactly the same. So I am going to add some sealant to this. Uh, you know, basically should be fine, but it's not. So I'm going to go a little bit extra and add some goop on this. The rest of this is all done. Um, if we find that these are rolling around a little bit up here and starting to leave marks, we'll use uh, probably some Ernabon tape to take them down. Clear silicone to lock that in and seal out any water trying to get in. 